So Trump says he's getting bored with Venezuela, <laughs> which is good news for Venezuela, right? Uh, President Donald Trump, this is according to Business Insider, it says President Donald Trump is losing interest in Venezuela after a bid to oust President Nicolas Maduro by U.S.-backed opposition figures in April failed, according to the Washington Post. An official told the Post that Trump had always thought of Venezuela as, quote, low-hanging fruit, unquote, which he could get a win and touted as a major foreign policy victory. So that's what he was thinking of Venezuela as. He was thinking, oh, this is just low-hanging fruit, and I could get a, a major foreign policy victory out of this because, you know, those talks in, in, uh, with Kim Jong-un didn't really work out, and so I need a foreign policy win. And so Venezuela, this would be the way to go. It says here that Trump reportedly chewed out National Security Advisor John Bolton and Mauricio Claver Caron, the Latin American policy director, as Maduro clung to power. It goes on to say that they underestimated Guaido. They also underestimated the people that were in Maduro's regime that said that they would turn on him. And so now he's pretty much uh, losing interest in Venezuela. He's bored, which we all know, for one, because he's turning his attention to Iran, because that's potentially a war that they could march themselves into. But let's talk about the rally round the flag effect, because that's what this really is about. Donald Trump, as we're heading towards the 2020 election, is looking for a way to boost his numbers, to boost his support. And it's actually a phenomenon called the rally round the flag effect. And the, and the entire idea of this is that during wartime, people will boost their support of the government. They won't want to criticize the government because we've got to be uh, we've got to be patriots. So it says right here, according to Wikipedia, the rally round the flag effect or syndrome is a concept used in political science and international relations to explain increased short-run popular support of the president of the United States during periods of international crisis or war. Because rally round the flag effect can reduce criticism of governmental policies, it can be seen as a factor of divisionary foreign policy. Which divisionary foreign policy, or a divisionary war, is an international relations term that identifies a war instigated by a country's leader in order to distract its population from their own domestic strife. The concept stems from the divisionary war theory, and that's it, it goes on. Um, so that... Uh, is what Donald Trump is doing. That is exactly what this administration is doing. They are looking to pick a fight. Now, Trump ran on an anti-interventionist message. He says, look, he, uh, he wants to be an isolationist, America first, doesn't want to engage in these wars. But the people around him, the advisors like John Bolton, the military industrial complex, they're quite clever and they're trying to play on his weakness. They know that here's a guy who's not actually that easy to march into battle. Trump actually has been less of a war hawk than the others. I mean, look at Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham starts calling for war right away. You see even Democrats who start calling for war right away. But Trump is kind of like, eh, I don't know. Even with Iran, he was like, I don't know. Maybe it was just a miscalculation or maybe it was just this. And he's kind of hard to talk into going to war. So what is advisors and these the people that are in with the military industrial complex, what they've done is they've honed in on his weakness. He wants to be liked. And they know this. So what they're doing is they're trying to they're trying to convince him to use the rally round the flag effect. They they're saying to him, look, the American people, they need a good battle. American people need a good war because when America goes to war, they love their presidents. For example, here's what it says. Here's some historical examples of the effect. The Cuban Missile Crisis. According to Gallup polls, President J JFK's approval rating in early 1962 October of 1962, was at 61%. By November, after the crisis had passed, Kennedy's approval rose to 74%. Here's the Iran hostage crisis. According to Gallup polls, President Jimmy Carter quickly gained 26 percentage points, jumping from 32 to 58 following the initial seizure of the U.S. Embassy in Tehran. Operation Desert Storm. According to Gallup polls, President George H.W. Bush was rated at 59% approval in January 1991. But following the success of Operation Desert Storm, Bush enjoyed a peak of 89%. 
Following the September 11th attacks, President George W. Bush received an unprecedented increase in his approval rating. On September 10th, Bush had a Gallup poll rating of 51 percent. By September 15th, his approval rating had increased by 34 percentage points to 85 percent. Just a week later, Bush was at 90 percent, the highest presidential approval rating ever. The death of Osama bin Laden, according to Gallup polls, President Barack Obama received a 6% jump in his presidential approval ratings, jumping from 46% in three days before the mission to a 52% in the three days after the mission. So you see the rally around around the flag effect is a real effect that presidents absolutely like to use when they see themselves dipping in the polls, especially if they're going to be up for re-election. Now, it says here on Wikipedia, the controversy and fears of misuse. There are fears that the president will misuse the rally round the flag effect. These fears come from the diversionary theory of war in which the president creates an international crisis in order to distract from domestic affairs and to increase their approval ratings through the rally round the flag effect. So now you can see why somebody like Lindsey Graham, for example, would be so hard on, yes, let's go after Iran, let's go after Iran. He's a Republican. He wants to maintain a Republican president because that means more of his agenda in the legislative branch gets through when you have somebody in the executive branch who's on your team. So you're going to see a lot of Republicans come out rallying around the flag, trying to use this effect, trying to get everybody into war. And we're going to see more of this ridiculous trying to march us into war, these ridiculous um, antics, you know, oh my gosh, look what they did. They, they, they put a mine on a tanker and look what they did. They shot down a drone off their coast. We're going to see more of these of these uh, events happen that the American people largely are sitting here saying, no, that's not enough to go to war. Sorry, that's not enough to go to war. And what is even scarier about that is as the American people, including the Republican constituents and Democrat constituents, when everybody's sitting there saying, no, this isn't enough to go to war, the worry is what are they going to try to conjure up to get us to go to war, to get us to agree to it? And that's the real fear as we look at this rally round the flag effect. But keep your eyes open on it. Know what they're doing. It's a gaslighting technique. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it.